Barbie Newsline is brought to you by the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc. High Court in Ghana refuses to force the President and Cabinet to resign. Our top story in Caribbean Newsline for Wednesday, October 16th. From the CMC News Center in Bridgetown, I'm Don Paris. Good evening. Ghana's Chief Justice Roxanne George Wiltshire on Wednesday threw out an application by the Opposition People's Progressive Party to compel the President and his Cabinet to resign in keeping with the passage of an all-confidence motion last December. The Chief Justice, in her ruling, described the application as not only wholly misconceived, but vexatious and an absolute abuse of the process of the court. She pointed out that the matter had already been taken before the highest court of Guyana, the Caribbean Court of Justice, CCJ, and was rejected. And she could not understand how it was expected that a lower court should deal with the matter now. The Chief Justice relied on the judgment of the CCJ in its consequential orders of July 12th. Attorney Anil Nandlao, who filed the application on behalf of the PPP, had argued that the CCJ had omitted to give a mandatory order compelling the President and Cabinet to resign. But the Chief Justice ruled that she was bound by the orders of the CCJ. Nandlao said he was disappointed by the court's decision and indicated he intends to appeal. He said the decision has plunged the country deeper into a constitutional crisis. But Attorney General Basil Williams welcomed the ruling. He said the decision had restored the position of the rule of law in Ghana. The AG had argued that the case was a wanton abuse of the court system because the CCJ was asked to make such an order but did not. We follow precedence and the principle of stare decisis is that you follow the precedence set by the higher court. And since the CCJ had already determined this issue, whether the cabinet and the government should resign, it was not fit nor proper or not, and it was of no legal effect. You'd come to the lowest court to seek to have that decision of the court of uh, CCJ, the apex court overturned. And I, I, I must say that our courts are exhibiting great patience, I, as, as, as I see it, because this is a matter that has been ventilated within the last maybe eight to nine months in there and in the courts, the other courts, Court of Appeal, CCJ. And to me, it, the Lord and Chief Justice was correct by saying it's a vexatious matter. A United Nations agency is urging the Bahamas to stop deporting Haitians in the wake of Hurricane Dorian, the worst storm in the country's history. The Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights made the call as it expressed concern about the October 3rd deportation of 112 Haitian migrants, among them people impacted by the Category 5 Hurricane Dorian when it devastated Abaco before causing similar destruction in Grand Bahama. It urged the government to refrain from deporting people who don't have documentation without allowing them the individual assessments and due process guaranteed under international law. The UN agency further called on government to put in place procedures to facilitate access to documents for all those who had legal documents prior to Dorian, particularly those who may be either stateless or at risk of statelessness. The Commission was also concerned about the impact of the government's reversal of its immigration enforcement activities after the storm. Well, in the immediate aftermath of Hurricane Dorian, which hit northern Bahamas from September 1st to 3rd, the government announced that immigration enforcement activities would be suspended. 
but that position was publicly reversed at the end of that same month when it was announced that all migrants without valid documents would be apprehended and deported. The UN body said that had led to panic among Haitians affected by the hurricane and reports are emerging of people leaving temporary shelters for fear of arrest and of people either failing to get necessary humanitarian services are going into hiding. Staying in the Bahamas, there appears to be some confusion over how many people remain missing following the passage of Hurricane Dorian. And Health Minister Dr. Dwayne Sands, who said the figure was a lot lower than the 1,200 given by Social Services Minister Frankie Campbell, says an official list of missing people will be published. And while that is being worked out, Sands says there may be changes to the seven-year rule on issuing death certificates for people missing. More in this report from Eyewitness News. 424 people still remain missing. Health Minister Dr. Dwayne Sands telling media today that government will soon list the names of missing persons in local newspapers. He says this will significantly assist officials with determining who is missing and allow families who still have not filed a missing person report the opportunity to do so. What we'd like to be able to do is to make sure that anybody who is missing a loved one knows exactly how to do it and that that process is that the difficulty is minimized so that people can get closure. Dr. Sands says once the names have been gazetted, families will be expected to provide detailed descriptions of their loved ones and DNA will be used to identify bodies which have already begun to decompose. Current laws indicate that families have to wait seven years before a missing person is classified as deceased. Dr. Sands confirmed that government is considering the idea of amending that timeline in the wake of Dorian. I think if there's overwhelming evidence that somebody is missing as a result of the storm, that some consideration should be made. Now, what that timeline should be or what the, should it be six months, a year, that is when discussion with all of the stakeholders would come up with an appropriate timeline. However, he warned that this is being considered with caution. Bear in mind that this is not something that you can just pull out of thin air. It, it requires consideration of the implications. You know, what would have happened if, if they declared Dwayne Sands to be dead and then six months later he shows up? Does he get to retrieve his real property? Does he get to now pay back the life insurance on his life? I mean, these are serious questions. So um, while there's a need for closure, I think we have to be very careful if we think this through very carefully. Hurricane Dorian's death toll now stands at 61. Trinidad and Tobago's Police Commissioner Gary Griffith is standing by his claims that the situation involving the 69 people rescued from the Transformed Life Ministry Rehab Facility earlier this month amounted to human trafficking. On Tuesday, the top cop called a media conference to clarify what he described as misleading comments about the raid at the rehab center. And to justify his stance on the matter, he invited law enforcement experts from the U.S. to join the meeting via Skype. We get more in this TV6 News report. It's been almost a week since the police commissioner and his special operations response team raided the Transformation Life Ministry and uncovered what Commissioner Griffith called at the time the largest human trafficking ring in the country's history. How soon can we expect charges of specifically human trafficking against uh, Pastor Awang? Okay, I can have um, DCP Ford answer because there's something called an investigation. And there are a number of matters here we are investigating. We have 69 persons. Each and every individual has a different story, has a different concern. Some of the family members. And it, it varies from a number of different matters that we are dealing with and listening on a daily basis with the DPP. I would really like to tell you that by midnight tonight, we can charge all who are culpable. However, you would, under, you would appreciate that we have an, an, an ongoing investigation. And as the commissioner has said, a lot of moving parts. The police commissioner continues to accuse media houses and some members of the public of downplaying the severity of the conditions found at the Transformed Life Ministry. We seem concerned about us exposing the truth. But the truth hurts. And probably it is what it is. You can't handle the truth. Well, that is it. And we need to face the truth, face reality, and understand that if we spend all of the time putting focus on the meaning of trafficking instead of making emphasis on putting the focus on 
trying to deal with a serious problem that is affecting the elderly, affecting mentally challenged persons in this country, affecting children. But we want to spend all our time trying to understand the meaning of trafficking. But the issue has never been about the conditions, but the commissioner's use of the terms human trafficking and modern day slavery. Sticking to his claims today, the police commissioner brought out a team the TTPS's legal department, the former head of the Division of Aging, an FBI consultant, and a former sergeant within the Los Angeles Police Department. When you look at the interpretation section of the Trafficking in Persons Act, it sets out what exploitation is. And, ex and ex exploitation can be many different things. What you guys have, have done, it's very obvious, is being able to identify human trafficking even though it may not present itself as such. So it might be hiding in the shadows of uh, a murder case or gang activity or drug activity, and most importantly, that it's not only international but national as well. Though Commissioner Griffith declined to say if he did his own independent investigation after receiving the information from the journalist before rating TLM, Griffith did admit though that about 20 and not all 69 patients were found in cages or handcuffs, contrary to multiple reports. Still to come, Ghana's president orders a full inquiry into a fatal car crash that claimed the lives of five people, including a presidential guard. The details when we return. Coming up, a mix of cultures on display in one location. We showcase highlights from Carafesta. Celebrating 10 years, it's the Food and Rum Festival in Barbados. And we learn about sustainable tourism in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. It's all next on Caribbean Passport, right here on this station. When you think of what we went through with Hurricane Irma, you had to be able to recognize what are the things we need to do to cope with the aftermath. The psychological trauma, to me, is probably the most telling on a lot of people. Preparedness is the key. So when people are prepared, when people have the, they have the, what their resources in terms of how they can cope with the disaster, they're better able to be able to uh, return to their normal life. They're better able to make decisions that are informed for themselves and for their family and then for their community. Be ready, look, listen, and link. Ghana's President David Granger has ordered a full inquiry into the car crash that left five people dead, including a presidential guard, on Tuesday morning. The Ministry of the Present Presidency has denied media reports that suggested a police vehicle involved in the accident was part of President Granger's convoy. But it has been confirmed that among the dead is presidential guard Ronil Barker, who was driving the police car. The other deceased are driver of the other car, Ghana Defense Force Sergeant Leon Tucker his aunt, Special Constable Laverne Stoby, and husband and wife Herbert and Denise Josiah, who were heading to work at the time of the accident. Two other people are reported to be in hospital in critical condition. President Granger visited the scene soon after the accident, and in a national radio and television statement later in the day, he sought to assure the country that the government and the security forces will ensure that the findings and recommendations of a commission of inquiry into the crash will be fully and rigorously implemented. This shocking event will be thoroughly investigated 
In fact, soon after the accident, within two hours, I dis directed the Commissioner of Police, Acting Commissioner of Police, Mr. Nigel Hoppy, to launch an inquiry headed by a person no lower in rank than the Deputy Commissioner to determine how such an accident could have occurred and also to make recommendations to prevent a recurrence. Uh, we will ensure that if there was any error, any mistake, any wrongdoing, that we ensure that there will be no further event like this in the history of the police force or the Guyan Defense Force. And President Granger added that whatever is found to be the cause of the accident, the government and the administration of the Ghana Police Force and Ghana Defense Force will take all necessary steps to make sure that the roads are used safely by all members of the security forces. Regulations, standing operating procedures, inspections, careful selection of drivers, training of drivers, all these measures are put in place so that we don't have recurrence of these tragic events of Tuesday the 15th of October. Well, it's time for Newsline Business, and this week, regional central banks are surveying individuals' payment preferences. The ECCB, has an ECCB launches a pilot of its digital currency, and the focus is on insurance, as the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union observes Financial Information Month. Marika Williams has the details. Central banks in the Caribbean are carrying out a survey to determine how people across the region pay for goods and services. Deputy Director of Research and Economic Analysis at the Central Bank of Barbados, Darren Downs, says the information collected will be used in a wider survey. In recent times, there have been a growing interest by central banks in the region and across the world on the innovations occurring in finance, the digital innovations occurring in finance. And this also includes the different types of payment methods that are used uh, by consumers. And as you can imagine, central banks, as the guardians of monetary and financial stability, this type of information would be important to us, um, understanding people's preferences and their perceptions about the different um, forms of digital payment. The Eastern Caribbean Central Bank has begun taking steps to develop the digital economy. The ECCB has launched a pilot digital version of the EC dollar through its app DXCD Carib. Governor Timothy Antoine says it offers a secure, innovative, real-time payment instrument for the currency union. The DXCD Carib pilot initiative is a key step in the build-out of a digital economy for our currency union and it is a necessity for the transformation of this region. We cannot transform this region without innovation. Now, very often when we think about innovation, our tendency is to adopt a wait and see attitude, a wait and see approach. I want to challenge us this morning to shift from that reactive, complacent mode to move from wait and see to wait and seize. Staying with the ECCB, the bank is observing Financial Information Month this month. The focus this year is on insurance. Antoine pointed to the region's goal of becoming the world's first climate resilient zone and he says adequate insurance coverage should be a critical element of that aim. Two thirds of natural disaster losses in the Caribbean are uninsured. At the household level, many homes are uninsured or uninsured. Some suggest only about 25% of our household stock may be adequately insured. Mary Claire Williams, Newsline Business. Ahead in sport, roles for Floyd Reefer and Desmond Haynes in West Indies cricket. Stay with us. As owner, you have to make sure your technology is available and operational at all times. But what happens when your network crashes, your email goes down, or your user systems get a virus? 
You may try to fix the issue yourself, but you can end up making the problem a lot worse. At Digital Networking Solutions, we're more than just people who try to fix your computers. We monitor, maintain, and support your IT systems so that you can focus on growing your business to its fullest potential. When you sign up for one of our IT support plans, we get familiar with your IT environments beforehand, so we can manage it proactively as if it were our own. Your business deserves the best IT services available to ensure it functions to its maximum efficiency. So give us a try today. Email or call us and we will give you a free network assessment to determine whether now is the time for your small business to adopt digital networking solutions for a smoother, more reliable network experience. When we look at the characteristics of stones that are responsible for death in our region, we experience more fatalities related to storm surge and to major rain and flooding. This is no bad life and I don't want to see a next hurricane like this. My neighbor roof, gone. Boy, 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 watch that, watch that, watch that, watch that, watch that, watch that, watch that. Oh, you don't see what we see. Entertainment is like craft. You know, you can craft a show. There are a lot of, right now, there are a lot of people who call artists already entertainers. You know, it's like somebody has created, it's like a, it's not, not as bad as many believe or dilly, but you know, it's like they have created. People, right. And they say, that's an artist. A recording of this artist or that artist. But unless you, you, there are some people who have a thing. Time for sports now. Unsuccessful challengers to the West Indies head coach position Floyd Reefer and Desmond Haynes will still have a role in West Indies cricket. That's the word from director of, director of cricket Jimmy Adams who says the former cricketers are still valuable. Haynes and Reefer were beaten to the head coach post by Trinidadian Phil Simmons who was also always considered the front runner for the position. Speaking to the media on Tuesday, Adams said the CWI will approach the legendary Haynes to determine his role, but made it clear it would not be limited to functioning in a youth program. Scott Desmond, the discussions will be had um, to see if there's a role for him going forward. Not, I wouldn't limit it to just under 19s, because I think what Desmond, you know, his, his, his knowledge of batting is something that could um, benefit far more than just the junior squads that we have. So it's definitely something that we'll be looking at going forward, Jeffrey. As for Reefer, the director of cricket says, his skill set is critical to the development of the youth program. Floyd's skill sets, um, there are options available right throughout our high performance system and the discussions will be had with Floyd going forward. But he's somebody that we definitely see as one of our top young coaches and we're going to be doing everything that we can to encourage him to keep to stay within the system, okay, and, you know, to, to continue making contributions to the development of our young players. Meanwhile, Cricket West Indies had, has announced the appointment of Gus Logie as the interim head coach of the West Indies women's team, as well as the appointment of Evril Betty Lewis as the new team manager. In a release on a Wednesday, CWI said Logie will take over the duties from Henderson Springer, who will continue to provide assistance to CWI's coaching education programs. It says Logie will guide the preparations of the West Indies women for their month-long series against the visiting Indian women's team beginning in November in Antigua. Logie has been the assistant coach of the West Indies women's team since 2017. And Lewis will take charge of the team immediately for the international home series against India women. She replaces Anne Brown-John, who was appointed as the lead selector for women and girls cricket. 
Former Jamaica fast bowler Andrew Richardson will take charge of Windward Islands Volcanoes for the upcoming Professional Cricket League. The 38-year-old, who grabbed 192 wickets in 68 first-class matches before going into coaching, replaces fellow Jamaican Andre Coley, who led Volcanoes since 2017. Richardson holds a Level 3 coaching certificate and a university degree, degree in sports science with sports management. He has also served as assistant coach and manager of West Indies A and has performed similar roles in the Caribbean Premier League with Jamaica Talawas and in the regional domestic tournaments with Jamaica Scorpions. Windward Islands Cricket Board President Dr. Kishore Shallow said the acquisition of Richardson would be a boost for Volcanoes. The team are currently preparing for the Regional Super 50, which runs from November 6th to December 1st. They will do battle in Group B alongside Ghana Jaguars, United States, West Indies Emerging Players, and hosts Red Force. To football now, goals from newcomer Shavani Willis from the penalty spot, Malik Foster with a double, Lamar Walker in the 18th minute, and Junior Flemings in the 47th ensured Jamaica's spot as top of Group C as they crushed Aruba 6-0 in the second leg of the CONCACAF Nations League on Tuesday. It's the second straight victory over the Arubans following their 2-0 demolition last Saturday. Here are the highlights of Tuesday's game at Willemstad. Are underway. So now a penalty kick for Jamaica. Sets up and then puts it home for the first goal. Inward swinging ball. Shot in that one. Finds the top right corner. Foster plays it forward. Another chance for Jamaica. Gets around the goalkeeper. And there is the third goal. Play this one. Here's another great chance. That shot blocked. And then the follow up by Nicholson. Total. And they'll have another chance right here. As that one is slotted into the right corner. This one. Nice. Oler shot in that one. Here's Flemings. That one is going to find the easy goal wide open. Brian Burton sends it in, and that one. And there is the final. In other fixtures, St. Lucia went under to El Salvador two goals to nil in their League B clash, while the Dominican Republic and Montserrat ended in a goalless draw. In League C, after beating the visiting USBI by one goal to nil at Wilde, Barbados continued their dominance, beating the U.S. territory four goals to nil. And that's the sport. He'll be right back. Caribbean Newsline is brought to you by the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc. Roy Rayon is an exceptional musician. His music is for all category of people. You're a Christian, you're unsaved, you can enjoy his music. What do you think about him performing? How is he as a performer? You were watching him today. Well, he endeavors to keep the crowd, you know, alive, and that is good. And he is, he could be a good master of ceremony. I'm Brittany Dixon, and you're watching Finding Fit, the show where I pair up one client with two trainers. Trainer number one. Oh my gosh. It's about fitness, comedy. You know, I could do this all day, you know. Drama. Um, in the future, we cannot be late. Inspirational stories and so much <gasps> more. You are going to love it. You can catch Finding Fit prime time this fall on Care Vision. Again, the major developments of this day. The High Court in Ghana refuses to force the President and Cabinet to resign as the opposition wanted. And in sports, unsuccessful challenges for the West Indies head coach position, Floyd Reefer and Desmond Haynes will still have a role in West Indies cricket. 
And that's Caribbean News Line for news and sport round the clock. Subscribe to CanonNews.com and for more of our programming, log on to CaribVision.tv and check out our YouTube channel. We'll be back here again tomorrow, but from all of us at CMC News, thank you for watching and have yourselves a good night.